that's something that's something that I did not know from reading your book. I read I read your book over the last couple of days. Cool. I want you to pick up the story. Okay, yeah. But but I just have to interject here because because I didn't realize this. When I was in school, mm -hmm. and you got a student loan, yeah, the student loan went to pay for books and classes and you know room yeah. and board tuition. Yeah, yeah. I didn't realize you can get a student loan to pay for furniture. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you, you definitely can. So what happens... Things have changed. Well, things ain't really changed. It's just that it just means that your student loans was paying for school. So I had my father's GI Bill and had a partial scholarship. Everything went to the school, but now on the student loan refund check time, I was getting all of that money cut directly back to me. See, that's what I wasn't getting, a refund check. And I, that's good. <laughs> well, you know, from reading your book, I know it is. You know, yeah, yeah, that's good. But you don't I'm, even want to touch it I didn't know about this, you know. Back then? Oh, years man, when ago. I seen, when I, when I got that first check, I was like, I can do this? I'm like, <laughs> this is uh, mine. This is mine. <laughs> you know, I don't have to tell my mom, I ain't going to tell my dad, I can do this? Um, and and I, I took advantage of it. Yeah. And So you got furniture. Oh, man. Furniture, man. I had, you know, back then, the, the 55 inch floor TV. You know, the heavy things and the leather. What does a 19-year-old need a leather couch for, you know? Um, everything in my apartment was furnished by Aaron Sales and Lease. $35,000 worth of debt. $35,000 worth of debt. And get kicked out of school. Um, and when I get kicked out of school, I lose the job that was attached to my school. And so when I go back home, you know, moms are the only one that can love you and slap you around and then love you again. Uh. Uh, but I'm so grateful that I have real men in my life. Because uh. uh, my father said, you know what, you told your mom you're a grown man, and a grown man doesn't come back home. Uh. And so he was like, so you're going to fix this issue that you started, that you created, since you're a grown man. A grown man lives with his own consequences. You can't come home. And at that time, I was so uh. upset with my dad. But my father knew if I allow my son to come home, he'll never become the man that I know he can become. Mm. And so my father said, go. But the whole time, my father's still watching over me. He Is that like, something you would do to your son now? Absolutely. Really? All day. Interesting. I, I, think, I think men these days, young men these days, one, they're not raising up. A lot of them are not raising up with fathers. And then, two, when, when the fathers are there, they're being a little bit too soft. Mm. And, and they got the mothers. And, and unfortunately, mothers got to be soft and firm at the same time. Mm. And I think fathers, men, we have to step up and show our men how to be men. Mm. And um, what my father there's did no, to There's me, no softness in being a man, you think? I mean, absolutely. I think we all can be soft. But mm -hmm. when it comes to teaching a young man how to become a man, mm -hmm. uh, we got to step back and show him we can be loving, we can be kind, mm -hmm. uh, but we are, we are designed to be uh, hunters, providers, shelterers. And so we, we got to show all the characteristics. Is that true for all men or, or some men? Hey, man, listen, if you ain't providing, I don't know if you're a man. Really? Yeah, you got to provide for yourself. Mm -hmm can't expect someone else to provide for you. Mm. And, you know what I'm saying? I think that's just something for me. That's one, that's one of the reasons why I think a lot of us get into debt, because we're, we're expecting somebody else to take mm. care of our house, mm. rather than it's our responsibility to take care of our house. So you couldn't come home. Couldn't come home. And, and you, $35,000 in debt. Yes, sir. You find yourself living where? I, uh, for six months of my life, the majority of that time, I'm homeless. I'm trying to figure out where mm. am I going to sleep. And the majority of times, I'm sleeping in the back of my car in the mm. Walmart parking lot off of Highway 76 in Oceanside, California. Mm. And uh, my life just switched around then because I'm like, mind you, I don't come from wealth, you know, mm. but neither sides of my family are broke. Mm. You know, they were living paycheck to paycheck, making ends meet. You know, we were eating French toast for breakfast, lunch, and dinner because we couldn't pay bills. Uh, but they weren't homeless. And um, that was probably the lowest point of my life. What did it feel like? Describe it in feelings, not sentences. Uh, depressed, suicidal, mm. not loved, um, worried, scared, mm. um, um, lost. Mm. What about shame? You know, I never felt shame because I was never blaming myself. Mm. I was blaming everyone else around me. Mm. I was blaming my father for not letting me come home. I was blaming my friends who we all participated in something and we got kicked out and I got kicked out because of that. Mm. I was blaming the young ladies I was trying to impress. I was never blaming myself until the end of the season mm. because I thought I was in this because of everyone else, not because of me. Decisions that you made. Mm -hmm. mm. And I, w I remember being in the back of the car and something just hit me. It was just like, the reason why you're here is because of you. 
But, but you know, now before before you get, because you because you met someone that sort of changed your whole story around, and I want you to talk about that. But 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 now, sitting before me now, mm -hmm. go back and think about what was his relationship with money. What what was money trying to do for him? For who me? You, the you you <clears throat> used to be. Man, money was for me when I really think about it. Money was. It really wasn't trying to help me. It was just really trying to set me up to be somebody who I really wasn't. It was bringing out the things deep down inside of me that were not healthy. Um, I was an arrogant, you know, brother back then in those days, and it brought up that more. Mm. Um, uh, I lacked knowledge, and it showed that a lot more. Mm. Um, I lacked wisdom, and it showed that a lot more. Uh, I would get a check on a Friday, and all that would be gone by Saturday. Mm. And so money wasn't. Could you stop for a second, Anthony? Yeah. How, how many of you <clears throat> know people exactly the same way? The way his 19 year old self used to be. Mm -hmm. They get a check on Friday, mm -hmm. and by Monday, mm -hmm. they call you to borrow some money, right? <laughs> because so many people, and this is what I'm asking you to tap into, yeah. because so many people, for them, money represents something. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Right? Yeah. It's medicating something right, right, right. or it's representing something. Yeah. And, and what you're doing right now is helping, I think you're helping so many people who are watching right, right. identify w what is the true, the truth yeah. of their relationship with money. Right. What does it do M for them? Money was controlling me. I wasn't controlling it. Hmm. Money was telling me where I'm going. I wasn't telling my money what where we're going and what we're going to do. Hmm. Um, money was bringing me and surrounding me around unhealthy relationships, hmm. uh, rather than me getting around healthier relationships and those relationships were showing me how to truly win with my money. Hmm. Um, now at 35, right. you know, uh, I tell my money what we're going to do. Uh, my money sits there and it's waiting for me to talk to it. Right. It's waiting for me to give it the vision for the future. Back then, I was following wherever the money led, I followed. So it was about identity, it was about access to lifestyle. Yeah. Am yeah. I right about that? Lack of identity. Lack I, of identity. I, I, didn't, I didn't really that's know who a, I that's was. That's a better way to say it. Yes. You know what I'm saying? I, yes. I, I, was, I was, if I thought to be popular, to be successful, to be well known, um, I had to have Jordans. I had to buy her this. I had to look like that. Mm. Um, and it really wasn't the case. But here's the truth no one taught me mm. how to win with money. Mm. What I got was great, loving advice from my family that was wrong. Go to school, doesn't matter how, doesn't matter where, you just need an education. Mm. Uh, build that credit score. Back then, if you had a 680, you were doing good. Mm. And so get, get that 680 credit score, get a job with benefits. No one said, hey, is school your right thing? No one said, hey, you know what? You need to actually save. You need to actually build wealth. You know what? No one said, you know what? Maybe getting a job is not, for, maybe be an entrepreneur, start a business. No one really sat down and taught me everything. I learned everything when I got into the real world. So, so take me through, because I want to read some stuff from the book, sure all right? Thing. Yeah. Um, so, so take me through what happened, mm -hmm. uh, who you met, whatever experience happened that sort of turned your life on the dime. Yeah, yeah. You know, my father, I didn't really meet anyone specifically, uh, uh, but it was my father. See, my father knew uh, exactly what was happening in my life. And so uh, on the last night I was in my car, uh, my father seen me and um, he knocked on the car and he told me to come on home. And during that time, uh, that was my depressed season, and my father said, come home. And when I went home, the next day, my dad said, hey, sit down at the table. And he apologized for not teaching me uh, correctly um, about finances, and he handed me a Dave Ramsey budget form. Mm -hmm. And when he handed me that <clears throat> budget form, he said, we're gonna get a, you're going to get a job, you're going to budget your money, um, and son, you need to be willing to lose some friends. And it was from that point on that... One, just be real, I got right with my relationship with Christ because mm -hmm. I knew God, but I didn't have a relationship with God mm -hmm. uh, because I was forced into church. Here it was, no, I, I need to be connected to the church. Mm -hmm. Got a job, got gazelle intense, um, and just really focused on getting out of debt because I was tired of being a black man that looked good, sound good, but was broke and disgusted and depressed. Yeah, you know, I tell people all the time, 
God is the only person I know who will fire you or hire you at the same time. At the same time. <laughs> <laughs> so listen, I'm going to read some stuff from the book. i got to put my glasses on yes, because sir. you're 35. Hey, Amen. And when you get to be my age, here's what they don't tell you also. You go blind. <laughs> okay? So it's coming. Yes, sir. Touch your neighbor and say it's coming. No, I don't, I'm not touching that one. <laughs> <laughs> so listen, all right, I want to read from the book because you, you say some interesting things here. Yes, sir. And um, uh, this book is geared towards helping students, helping parents mm -hmm. and students yes, sir. understand how to not go into debt and ruin their lives financially by going to college. Yeah, yeah. Did I get it right? You are right on. <clears throat> tell, tell me, uh, in addition to that, in, maybe in two sentences, why did you write this book? Because no one taught me and I wanted to make sure that I taught them. That is not an encouraging book. That is a step-by-step -step guide. <clears throat> Right. The, the stuff that you need to know to win, to succeed, and to go to college debt free. I wish I had that when I was in high school. So let me read. Let me read a few things from here um, that I didn't know. Mm -hmm. All right. He says, <clears throat> Anthony says, uh, let's start with the simple math. If a student borrows hundred thousand dollars to pay for school at a six percent interest rate based on a tenure repayment plan, the gift that they will receive at graduation will be a debilitating. $1,100 loan payment every month. He goes on to say that's an extra $33,200 more than they borrowed to go to school. Think about it. Now, if you go back to where I'm at in the <coughs> South, right, you, you, you can get a mortgage anywhere from $100,000 to $150,000. You graduate with a mortgage payment, but you have no real estate. And so for me, uh, say that again, because <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Again. You know what I mean? It's, it's true. I mean, you graduate with this huge mortgage payment, rent payment uh, for an education. And studies are showing that kids think that if they take out student loans, that within three years after they graduate, they can pay back their student loans. Mm. Studies are showing uh, that it's actually 20 years later that on average, the average person has about 60 to 65 percent of the balance. But when we really break it down and look at people who look like you and I, mm. 20 years after we graduate, we still owe 113%. Mm. And so we're not making payments. And so which is, that's another reason why I just, I just really wrote that book, because um, it's a st huge student loan crisis across the world. But when you really study and break it down to the minority culture, they need that. Mm. They need the step-by-step -step guide to help <clears throat> them in the future. Now, you know, one of the things I love about the book is that it's not an, an inspirational kind of path. Yeah, it's not a motivational it's, it's It's a how-to. Yes, sir. Um, and you start with eighth grade. Yes, sir. You start giving advice for students to begin to prepare to get ready for college yeah. in a seventh grade. Seventh grade. Seventh Everybody grade, there you right? Go. Yeah, and yeah. you take them all the way through the senior all year. All through the journey. All the way through the journey, all giving the advice journey. the whole way. I had to. Now. One, one of the misnomers that mm -hmm. people have, and I'm sure some of my, my audience members have this too, I had it, mm -hmm. is this, that loan forgiveness is something you can count on, right? So I'll, you know, I'll get a loan and then okay. magically, mm -hmm. you know, I'll, I'll, I'll qualify for loan forgiveness. You write this, the requirements for loan forgiveness are demanding. For example, you have to take, you have to make, I didn't know this, you have to make 120 on-time monthly payments, 10 years worth and only certain types of loans are included. And not every type of payment is counted. Most people who have applied for forgiveness have been rejected. Yeah, if we really look at the stats, 2% have been approved. So this means 98 to 99% of people have been ejected. And so um, a lot of people are sitting down, and, and I'm not disrespecting any of the presidential candidates, but I'm not waiting for the White House to fix my house, okay? Mm. And so I'm gonna get gazelle intense about it right now. But at the same time, when you really think about the student loan forgiveness, the government has shown us already that it doesn't work. You know, they are, we're gonna do this for you, we're gonna do this for you if you do this, if you do that, uh, but it's not happening right now. Let me